we got a little project due on the T76 today. You know, when, when these came out, <laughs> they got issues. Well, th this is Ethan. I don't know if y'all remember Ethan. He was the one drinking diesel fuel off the back of the truck a couple years ago. He's grown up a little bit, but he's gonna help me install a uh, kit right here. So some of these um, R series, when they came out, they had some issues, but Bobcat's on top of it. You know, they listen to their customers and when there's an issue, they try to come up with something to fix it. So let's take a look at the issue we're gonna work on today and <clears throat> kind of look at the kit we're gonna install. And there's a few problems with the kit that we'll get straightened out. So the issue on this machine and well, all R series machines is the air filter. People complain about how much dirt these filters hold or, or how much dirt they accumulate in a very short amount of time and we'll probably hear the word vacuum a few times so what um what what changed you know what when we put this inline engine in we kind of changed the direction of airflow with this giant cooling package now so this fan is pulling air around the engine and out the top of the um with the heat exchanger and it, what we're doing is we're air washing the engine where we're doing everything we can to keep these systems running cooler as opposed to like the m series so now this is like a giant vacuum right so all your dirt and everything that you're stirring up as you're operating the machine is just getting sucked in through this door it's actually getting sucked in up front of the machine that's why the machines get so much dirt up in the front yeah, just like a whoosh, it just sucks it up. So now we're sucking all that dirt in the whoosh. engine compartment, you know, all that dust. And now our air filter housing also is like a big vacuum, you know, an engine vacuum. And it's sucking its intake air is actually coming from the engine compartment. So it's pulling all that dust into the filter. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is just like a solid brick and Ethan, you're gonna to have to clean the floor, but look, I mean, we just knock out. I mean, this thing probably weighs 10 pounds and I think it's wet too. It's actually getting wet. Um, it's pulling water in from where the kind of the intake issue is. And then if we, oh, I wanna clean out this housing, but we'll be real careful here. Even our inner filter has a lot of dust on it. And this, this concerns me because really, yeah, no dirt is supposed to get really past this. This is like last line of defense and it is covered in dirt. So what, what I think is happening is the operators, I think, Ethan, are they're, they're pulling this out. So we don't recommend pulling the air filters out and knocking them out or blowing them out. Cause what happens is when you do that, that dirty, uh, that dirt that's dust that's flying around in the air kind of gets back down on the inside of the filter. And I think that's why it's getting pulled into this filter. Cause I've, it's, it's odd I see an uh, inner filter this dirty. So what are we gonna do to fix that? Well, thanks to shop.bobcat.com, they sent us a kit that's called an aspiration kit. And that's what we're gonna install in here. So it's basically another vacuum that we're gonna suck the big heavy dirt out of that air filter housing. So let's go take a look at what the aspiration kit looks like. Super duper cool cut to the aspirator thing. Whoa. No, 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 you gotta do like the Batman one goes, <laughs> <and they're> like, <laughs> <the spin one. laughs> all right. So, over here is our aspiration kit. So, what we've got is a bracket, a hose, you know, a fan, uh, the intake for that fan, just a little bit of hardware, a clamp, some instructions, and a little wiring harness. So, I guess what what we're supposed to do is you know, we mount this fan to this bracket. This goes on the other side of it. And the fan is now going to suck that heavy dirt out of the filter housing. It did come with instructions, but man. I mean, like, look at these pictures. This is terrible. You can't even tell what these are. I don't know who's in charge of these kits or putting instructions on here, but this has got to be the worst. Must be a science teacher. A science teacher? Yeah, they always got the crappy printers. Yeah, it does kind of look like this kit was designed by a high school science project kid. Anyways, I think it's gonna work good, but there is a few issues with it. And we'll start with what I found. 
So our bracket is gonna come back down in this part right here of the frame. And now it, it gives us measurements to drill holes in here. Now I think on the, can you see where I've already got one drilled. I've already kind of started this project and I got one down here. So the measurements are in the, um, the instructions. But the instructions say like, a, use a 10 millimeter drill bit, which is actually a big drill bit. I mean, that's almost um, half inch. So, but the bolts they send are, are really small, like a 5 16. So a 5 16 hole would, would be just fine to drill it. And I think the newer serial numbers already have these holes drilled in there. I could be mistaken, but I had to drill these in there. So one of the problems is actually getting my drill to fit in here. Now I don't have a 90 degree drill, which I probably should have, but trying to get a drill and a drill bit to fit in here was kind of a pain. Number two, when we try to put the bolt in there, it sends a bolt and a nut. So now the bolt comes through here and we got to walk all the way to the other side and use a nut. So it's a two person job to get those bolts and nuts in there. Now the next problem I see is here's the harness that it sent. This is just a two plug harness. This side plugs into the fan. And then this side is supposed to plug in to this plug that's right here next to our, um, this is where we would connect our, our scan tool here, but now, and it goes up to the front of the machine and works, you know, the seven pin harness and all. But anyways, so what's the problem? I've got a six pin plug here and they sent a two pin plug to work with that, but this is capped. So we do have a plug here. So I think what we're gonna have to do is depin these two wires and repin it into this plug. And I think we're using this black and orange if I'm not mistaken. And this is supposed to, when we start, it says when the machine starts. So I don't know if that's when we turn key on or engine on, but I'm assuming key on, we're gonna have 12 volts to this orange and black wire. And that's what's gonna turn our fan on and start pulling vacuum out of the harness. So yeah, so there's a couple little problems. Just I think just the dimension of the drill bit was too big. And this um, wire and harness right here does not fit. Although the instructions do show that this kit works with this serial number. I mean, we're well within the serial number range. So I'm not sure what's up with the harness. All right, so now that I've got, you know, this part assembled, we're ready to put this bracket in the machine. So, you know, the fan, it shows that, you know, the plug comes out the bottom of the bracket once it's mounted to the frame here, the plug does come out the bottom. You know, the, the actual cone here, the uh, part that bolts on top of the fan, you know, it's, it doesn't matter what position it's in, but we do have a little safety decal here that says, do not put your hand in the fan and that's going to go right here so that you can see that when the doors open. So just a little safety sticker. Now we've got our tube. Here's those little mounting screws I was talking about that they said that they wanted to do a 10 millimeter drill bit. So um, I'm not going to put these in today. I'm actually using some tech screws, some self tappers. And that way, you know, we can get this in there quick, kind of held in place. That's what I use to, to drill my holes with. But we can also use that to mount it just temporarily so we can just test and make sure that everything is going to fit. And then we'll worry about, you know, getting our main bolts in there later. What's the cleaner for? That's a good question. Now that we've got, you know, the, the aspiration kit mounted, 
what I like to do is just kind of clean out these housings before I put new air filters in there. Mm. So just kind of a damp rag or something. I just use a little cleaner in here just to kind of get the dust knocked down and cleaned out. And then we will put our new filter in. So I guess one advantage of these filters, you know, they're, they're kind of a gear shaped here. That's kind of another Bobcat kind of pr proprietary type thing. We got to get those installed and sometimes it can be a little tough, but I'll just kind of line them up, wiggle them into place. But, um, you know, these filters are much cheaper than what they were on the M series. Um, I mean, that's a really big filter. It looks nice quality, but I think these are only like $35, man. These are much cheaper to change, I guess, when they get super dirty than the old ones were. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and mount. I forgot to clean the inside of the cap. Dang, you got me on that one. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt inside there. That all builds up, it's almost like mud. Gotta dry it out here. All right, so when we install this, we want this little duck bill, we call it, facing straight down. So we'll kind of line this up, and then this will turn, lock into position, and then we press our lock in here. So this little duck bill assembly is actually coming off, and we're just gonna discard that, because I don't think we need it anymore. And our hose that it came with, I gotta go get the hose clamp here. But it wraps over that assembly, and then this, it does have a groove in here, so once we lock it onto this air filter cap, like it's like locked on really good. It's like hard to get off. So now you can kind of see what's going on here. So this fan, it's like a small radiator fan, is now pulling that big heavy dirt out of here. Now we're trying to um, just get some of that big dirt and dust, and I guess it's just gonna blow out in here and hopefully just kind of go out the bottom, so. Now we can plug in our little harness here, but we still have to make this work. So let me go grab a couple tools and we'll um, repin this into this and see if it'll work. So my original plan of, you know, pulling these pins out of this connector and putting them into this connector is not gonna work because these are a much larger pin. Um, they just, they're not gonna fit into this connector. So I'm gonna have to repin these, unfortunately. I mean, I checked all the plugs back here. I, like I, said, I don't know, I'll have to get with Bobcat on that, but there, there's no other option. This is the only empty plug that's available. So I'm gonna have to repin these two pins so it'll fit in this connector and then plug into that. Um, you know, these are the same gauge wire coming into here, which can have smaller connections, which I don't like, but I don't know what the amperage on that motor is, but maybe it'll be okay. So luckily I do have a Deutz connector kit in the shop, so yeah, I wish this was a little easier. <laughs> Deutz. Deutz. I wish this was an easier install. Um, I have to get with Bobcat on that. You know, it's Sunday night, so I don't have anyone to call. We're just gonna try to make this work because I gotta get this machine finished up and out of here. So before I put the lock piece in there, I'm just gonna see if I can get this to plug up and just test it. Um, Nathan, you wanna grab me the camera? Just go turn the ignition on real quick.
So yeah, it did come on. So it's, it's not a strong vacuum, but it's definitely pulling a vacuum through there. Okay, you want to go turn it off? Uh, yeah. So you can hear that running. I mean, it's a little loud, but that's pretty cool, man. This is a really cool kit. Like I said, I just wish that the, uh, I don't know if it's just a serial number issue or, or what it is, but okay. That's what I did is there's just a lock in there that we put back in this Deutz connector and then we'll. Deutz. Deutz. All right. And then we will just re-zip tie these up to that bracket, just like it shows in the instructions. But first I need that little clamp here. We just got to clamp that. So here's what our aspiration kit looks like installed. I mean, it's a really, it's a clean install. It's quality parts. I mean, I like all that. The only problem was, you know, our plug and actually drilling those holes and getting the bolts in. And of course the instructions telling us to use a much larger drill bit. So like I said, this is a solution to a problem that, you know, Bobcat was facing, you know, they, they listened to their customers and they fit it in. So. What do you think? I mean, we shouldn't have to use that, right? But, I mean, it is what it is. It's, you know, this customer was desperate because they were filling up their filters like every few days. It was so dusty. Damn, really? Yeah, we're out in the desert. It's like moon dust out here, so it just sucks all that into the filter. So, but now we're kind of coming into winter time, so I don't know if we're going to get a whole lot of that moon dust to test this thing out, but we're going to keep an eye on it and hopefully do a follow up video here in a few months and, and see if it's helping or. Worst case, we'll stick with this machine through the springtime and see if that helps. So, neat little kit. Yeah, check it out. I'll leave a link for um, to where to get that on shop.bobcat.com. I will reach out to Bobcat, see if we can get those little issues fixed up, and maybe it'll help you like it's going to help them. They were desperate for an answer, and I think this might help. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. Let me say, this is how I did it. But remember, that's not the only way to do it. That's how I did it. Thanks for watching. See, I is that we need an outro? Yeah, we should get like a super cool outro of like some super duper cool clips of like Bobcats doing stuff. <laughs> like an intro and an outro? Yeah. The only problem is nobody gives a shit about your intro. Yeah, I hate intro. What is, what's the first thing you do when you see an intro in a video? You skip it. You skip it. I do too. And usually if I see a long intro, I just I click off of it. Yeah. I just go to a whole other video. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you still there? <laughs>